Hello YouTube! So today I'm going to talk about my experience building my custom dress with Anomaly. So in this video I'm going to go over things like how much it costed me, what the process was like, and how my dress actually came out. So let's start off with why I actually went with Anomaly. Um, at first I kind of had like a vision of what I wanted my wedding dress to be. I had a lot of pins on Pinterest, but I wanted to make sure that I tried those dresses actually on before I committed to something. I went to maybe two stores and then I decided I liked a specific silhouette, which is kind of like in between an A-line and a ball gown. And I tried on this one dress, which had really great layering in the front and in the back. So in the second bridal shop, I actually landed on this dress that I really liked. I didn't really expect to like it at all because it was a little bit different from what I was looking for. It had a little bit of a different silhouette. It had some layering going on, which I didn't think I would like, but I think since I was having such a big wedding that my dress would be kind of more bigger and, you know, a little bit more extra. So that's what I ended up liking, but what I didn't like was actually the pricing on it. It was about $2,300 before alterations. So it would have cost me probably around $2,500 when it came down to the actual cost of the dress with the taxes and all the alterations. So instead of paying that much money for a wedding dress, because A, I realized, you know, the dress isn't the most important thing that day and I rather would save you know, another thousand dollars or so if I got a cheaper dress. And B, I didn't actually like the lacing that was on the dress. I preferred something that was maybe more 3D florals. Um, and I also didn't like the beading. So that was kind of a turnoff when it came down to the pricing in conjunction with the fabric that I didn't like. So I decided to see what Anomaly had to offer just because I had a lot of Instagram ads from them and I was interested in them, but I just didn't know if I wanted to commit or not. So after going back and forth on all the different dresses that I tried on, I ultimately landed on the fact that the silhouette in conjunction with the lacing and all the little details that I wanted wasn't exactly what I could find in a store. So I decided that I should go the custom route and go with Anomaly. So I don't know if this is a turnoff for brides, but the dresses are actually manufactured in China. And one of the reasonings why they choose to keep the sourcing in China is because a lot of high-end dress designers that you go and shop in the bridal stores actually use these same manufacturers as well as the same fabrics. So I think that's a good enough reason to kind of just look past that. And also Anomaly is very transparent with, you know, their manufacturing process. If you go onto their Instagram, they actually have a lot of behind the scenes that are actually in those factories. And you can see that the conditions are normal conditions. They're not sweatshops. These are actually people who work on your dress and customize it. And I think it's great that Anomaly is really transparent with this because they want you to really see what goes behind the scenes of what it takes to make a dress and why they are able to afford to make it so much less than what other brands are charging you. And if you actually want to learn more about Anomaly, the company, I will leave their link down below so you can read more about their story. So when it came down to the timeline, it actually took about eight months to get the dress done. And that's kind of what they suggest is to have it at least eight months. And that's kind of like the shortest amount of time that you can get things done. So if you really want your dress by a certain amount of time, you need to expedite everything and make sure you choose your fabrics and what you want. So if you really don't know what you want, I would suggest going even earlier than that. Contact them even a year beforehand or 10 months beforehand, but if you know what you like, then I think you shouldn't have trouble by getting it done within the eight month time frame. So I had my first design consultation on January 31st. It was a 45 minute conversation with one of the stylists and prior to that, you are able to kind of go and make your own little Pinterest board, which they call a lookbook, but you can put down all the images of inspiration of what you want your dress to look like and kind of go over it with the stylist and that way they can kind of narrow down what your look is exactly like. So I talked to my stylist and it seemed really good. She was able to crunch the numbers and kind of give me a rough estimate of how much the dress would cost based on the materials, how big I wanted it to be, and all of those kind of details. And by the end of that phone call, I was able to get an invoice that same day. So I was able to kind of calculate 
how much the dress would cost and I think this is one of the best things about Anomaly is that they give it to you straight away and even my design consultation I know some people feel like it's salesy but for me it wasn't salesy I think it really depends on who you get as your stylist or consultant on the design ultimately they just want to gauge to see if you're actually interested and if you're actually going to commit to buying so after your lookbook and design consultation they definitely want you to make that first payment and I'll have a whole section about payment later on in this video but you definitely have to make your first payment before they give you a sketch or anything to do with your dress before they get started. So after making that first payment, they were able to get started and send me the fabric swatches as well as a measuring tape. I'll insert a picture here. Oh, and then they send you things like your lace samples based on what you said you liked. They will choose a few different lace options. And if you see a lace option that you like previously used on one of their dresses, you can definitely send that to them as well. So in between all of this the dress designer will actually be sketching out your dress so you could see exactly how it's going to look before you approve it once I got the design sketch I was able to take a look and see okay I think this needs to change or this looks perfect and I approve but I did have to make a few alterations to the dress before I got it exactly how I wanted it so I will insert a picture of my sketch right here this is exactly how I wanted my dress to be I hope you cannot hear how windy it is outside oh my feet fell asleep so after you pick out your fabrics and your laces you're able to send in your measurements and they send you a very detailed list of all the things you have to include so with the measuring tape that they include you have to take your own measurements and this is where it gets kind of nerve-wracking because you want to make sure that it is most accurate because you don't have a seamstress helping you out I found that this was pretty easy for me to do I had Brian actually measure me and that seemed fine they also give you kind of detailed directions on how to actually fill out this list that they gave you and you also have to send in pictures of yourself so in these pictures that you send to them you should be in like a tank top or in some more form-fitting clothes wearing kind of the undergarments that you're planning to wear under your dress so once all those things are done the sketch the lace the fabric the measurements and the pictures you get a design summary and it lists every single detail about your dress and you give it that final stamp of approval and once you do there's no turning back I approved that about the first week of March, so if you're kind of looking at my timeline, it took me about two months from the start of the design consultation to actually approving it for pre-production. That's how long it took me. It could take you longer depending on you, you know, kind of are still figuring out exactly what you want your dress to look like. One thing that I have to say is that they were really responsive about making changes. So if there was any little change or even bigger changes, because I kind of had a big change with the skirt that I wanted, you're able to kind of talk to the stylist and whether that be through the phone or email, they are going to make that change right away. But keep in mind that if you are kind of more on an expedited timeline, you have to, to be conscious of that and make sure that the decisions that you're making are going to be your final choice for your dress so once I made my final payment and the dress was all paid off they were able to send it into the production stage and that takes about three to four months to actually build the dress so this is when they're sending your pattern and your design to the actual seamstresses in China to make your dress and during this time they sent me monthly emails so it would just be like oh your dress is in production or oh they're you know making the pattern right now but they're not really giving you much insight beyond that so if that makes you nervous I don't know what to tell you because you really don't have any control after that so from March to about the second week of July was when my dress was in production from start to finish so prior to actually sending the dress to your doorstep they actually send it to their headquarters in San Francisco for a quality check and then they will send it to your doorstep so I got my dress by July 12th and they started production March 8th I think. I think that gives you kind of a good gauge on how long it actually takes to get your dress. And I wanted to make sure I got it by mid-July so I could have at least a month to two months before the wedding to actually get the alterations done. So after waiting for about six months my dress finally came in and here's a little clip of me unboxing it. Oh my god! Oh. 
I'm going to have another video which actually goes into more detail about my dress. So when it came down to the cost and actually paying for the dress, my dress ended up being $1,275, which is actually a thousand less than that dress that I previously tried on in the bridal shop, which I was already really excited about just saving a thousand dollars on a dress. The great thing about Anomaly is that they actually have a referral code that you could use. So I like found someone else's review on YouTube and I used their code and I was able to get a hundred dollars off the dress. So my dress ended up being $1,175 total. And that price is actually including all of the fees, including shipping and tax. So that is a flat $1,175 that I paid for my dress. And when it came to actually paying for the dress, you're actually able to do installments, which is a really nice perk because a lot of bridal shops will not let you do that. You might be able to do an installment that is pretty large, but for Anomaly, I was able to put $200 down and that is actually what I needed to pay before they started the sketching. So to keep from this video from being too long, I'm going to actually have another video where I talk more about my dress and how it actually came out and kind of the aftermath of you know, receiving the dress, getting the alterations, and working with Anomaly to make sure that it is your perfect wedding dress. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video very informative if you're trying to choose between Anomaly or a more traditional bridal shop. And if you have any questions, please let me know down below and I would love to help you out. I also put down a link for my referral if you wanted to use it and get $100 off. See you in the next video. Bye!